episode of Indie Authors. Uh, today is Indie Authors number 63. I'm delighted to have a fantastic author, Matthew Mather, with us today, author of best-selling books, Cyberstorm and the Atopia Chronicles. Uh, thank you for being with us today, Matt. Thank, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm your host, Jason Matthews. With us, as usual, is my beautiful and talented co-host, Marla Miller. Marla, thanks for being here. Always a pleasure. Now, one of the reasons why your books have been so successful in the uh, techno-thriller category is because you have a great uh, history of working on interesting technology. Um, it's, it's really like a, a what's what of technology when, when I look at your um, when I look at your fields, you've been involved with the, the cybersecurity community, you've worked with intelligent machines, uh, tactile interface, uh, brain training video games, uh, computer nanotechnology, electronic health records, weather prediction yeah. systems. I mean, it just goes yeah. on and yeah. on. Tell us a little bit about your background that enabled you to write these books so much better. Well, I, mean, I have a... Um, um, my, my training, I guess, is an electrical engineer, uh, but I always had a uh, kind of an entrepreneurial background. The first company I started was in uh, marketing when I was, you know, 18 in college. Um, and then right when I left university, even I went to work for Formula One. I didn't throw that one on there, but um, I did a, did a stint out there. But I always um, just had a very wide range of, of interests. Right, out of, right after I got out of college, I started up, I went to work for the McGill Center for Intelligent Machines where we didn't actually work with intelligent machines. We were trying to think about building them. I'd like to meet an intelligent machine. I thought that would be an interesting uh, uh, adventure, one of the things I write about. But, uh, yeah, I always had this interest in doing startups. And, and right away, when I was 26, I went to raise venture capital and started up a tactile feedback company. And that led into one, uh, one thing after uh, another. Um, I also worked helping do startups at uh, universities where I ended up getting dragged into other startups like in the nanotechnology and uh, weather prediction systems. Uh, it's just really interesting. You know, it's really, it, it sounds like a lot of different things, but from one point of view, it was always technology startup and entrepreneurism. Sure. And that's always, that's always the same thing. You know, it's find some money, find an audience and, and you know, apply those principles. And ultimately when I came to, um, to self-publishing, I, one of the reasons it's been successful is I had a background as an entrepreneur and I just applied those same principles, you know, you know, focus on one very specific area, go and use all the resources you can. And, and I really, I applied the entrepreneurial idea to self-publishing a book and I think that really um, is one of the reasons it was successful. Matt, I have, to, I have to ask this question. During your, I have several questions. Um, one of them is yeah. I'd love to know the genesis or when your characters start to be when you started to birth your characters and how, how, you know, in terms of your experience professionally, when did that start? When did you start drafting characters that were fictional and obviously based on your experience? And the other is, uh, maybe this is the one that I'd like you to zoom in on right now. What made you decide to do the entrepreneurial route in publishing versus traditional? Um, so, okay. I mean, Too much for you, I know, but I'm just really <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just writing them down. Uh, so, what made me decide I wanted to do the entrepreneurial route? Really, yeah. I, 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 I wrote a book. I actually took, I consciously took a year off when I, um, when I turned forty. I said uh, I always wanted to write a book, and I had some ideas. Um, so I took a year off. I took that year to uh, to write a book, and then I submitted it to you know a hundred agents. Um, I sent it off to publishers. I even I have family in uh, New York who know you know people at Random sure. House and et cetera, et cetera. It all it all went nowhere. Um, <clears throat> and uh, my first book, which was Atopia, uh, which was called Future Dawn, and I actually Hugh Howie actually convinced me to change the name of it, um, which was which was a good thing. But uh, that book was about 140,000 words, and everybody said that everybody that went to the publishing business said this will this will never sell. It's too big. It's too, too big. complicated. For et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then but I you know I put it out on Amazon and it sold 40,000 copies so far. <laughs> 50,000 actually. 50,000. 52,000. Is that right? Like that. Yeah, uh, and it's yeah. it's a it's a pretty esoteric, fairly complicated you know 
science fiction books. I'm surprised that many, you know, that many people even have read it, to be honest. Um, but uh, yeah, so that 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 covers why it just the reason why I did it was because there was no other avenue for it. Got know? it. Got it. Yeah. Which is the reason why most of us go down that road. We've already explored the traditional route, and because of of the changing dynamics in traditional publishing, entry into that is just, you know, you really have to be the perfect uh, profile to for them to accept your books these days. Yeah, and the interesting part of it is now, fast forward a year later, I actually had a couple of six-figure offers from the traditional publishers, like the Random so, House, and course. I was doing, I was doing so well that I actually ended up having to turn them down, which is. Um, wow. And that's yeah. an interesting thing uh, because <laughs> wow. Matt, Matt, you also mentioned uh, uh, knowing Hugh Howey, and that's a similar thing that that Hugh Howey did. It, it's it once once his books really started taking off, these offers came in to to from publishers. But it was our it was a better thing to stick with what you're doing. But you did take some of the foreign uh, rights publisher offers. Can you can you tell us a little bit about that? Huh. Yeah, well, and so one, once I actually um, got some success um, self-publishing and you start to generate some pretty impressive numbers, um, you know, then I went out and started talking to some agents and I kind of came up with a, a hybrid uh, plan where you can sell audio rights to your books, you can sell them in, you know, in, in foreign uh, countries and then you can uh, and then keep your self-publishing in the U.S. market and uh, it ends up being, you know, kind of, a, a really good hybrid model. So you work with, right now I'm working with, and this wasn't this plan starting out, but afterwards it looks like a very clever plan, <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, end up having, you know, uh, something like 10 so far, I think, foreign publishing deals with foreign publishers. And some of those publishers are the same traditional publishers that you would have here, just in other countries. Um, but I, so I have traditional publishing deals in a range of foreign countries, but in the U.S. market, I'm just keeping um, self-publishing for now. Um, so that, that's the way it's worked out, yeah. Uh, Matt, I want to go to your Amazon page. Good, yeah. Um, let me, let's, uh, let's show some of your stuff so that people can see what we're talking about here. This is actually your author page at Amazon. We're going to talk a little bit about Atopia Chronicles and Cyberstorm. If I am correct, Atopia Chronicles is, is a collection of shorts that, that you put out as an as a entire book. Is that correct? It, it, it actually started out as one complete book, okay. um, but then I put it out and it, it didn't sell very well. And then I talked to Hugh, who and this is pre pre Wolfing Hugh. He was uh, he was just struggling along at that point as well. And uh, you know, he, he said, you know, it really works. You know, uh, if you serialize, you know, it gives mm -hmm. people bites on bits of of, uh, of information. So I went back and actually rewrote the entire book as a serial in, into short stories. And then publish each one of the short stories separately, and then combine them all together into one book. And then was promoting each one of the individual shorts on Amazon. So, and that just that formula led to that book taking off. Um, so to begin with, actually, it was one just one book, but um, for marketing purposes, to to get off the ground, I actually separated it into six, uh, six separate books. You know, so it is. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it, so it is. A, it is a collection of six short stories, yeah. but it wasn't intended to be. It was intended to be one story. It is one story. It just told through six individual stories. Yeah. I, I okay. wanted to say that I, oh. I discovered your and just very quickly, um, Jason, because I want writers to know about the blog that you have on your site. That's called um, the Twenty. Is it Shakespeare? Is that the? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I thought that that was, and I've been reading blogs about how to uh, self-publish for a long time, and. Um, I'm posting that all over the place because it's the most, I think, certainly one of the most informative blogs that I have ever um, read. And in that, Thanks. you talk about serializing, and you got that tip from Hugh Howie, yes. Uh, yeah, it, it wasn't yeah. something he told me to do, but it was something he was doing. He said this, you know, it gives, and I'd seen right, right at that point was when Wool was starting to, uh, to yeah. take off, and you could see success it was having. And you know, people have got very short attention spans, um, especially with a brand new author. So sure. if, Makes if you sense. give them some, yeah, if you give them something ten thousand words and and that gets them hooked, then they'll come back for more and more and more. You know? I love that. Uh, yeah, and it, I think it's a great way for once you've got off the ground and people trust you and they have that trust that 
if you write a big complicated book that you're going to tie it all together and it's going to make sense at the end, they'll they'll stay with you. But mm -hmm. as a new author, you really need to 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 get something short and punchy uh, mm -hmm. to, to, I think that's to start brilliant. To build that trust. Yeah. Brilliant advice. I really do. I think that that's very, very useful for indie authors to be listening to. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about Cyberstorm now. Also, mm -hmm. this is this is a book that's only been out for about six months. I, I can't mm -hmm. believe it's it's closing in on two thousand reviews already. I mean, these are like twilight kind of numbers. Um, this book is obviously. So I mean, cool. all of your books are winners. Uh, this book is is just really taking off. You've already landed the the movie deal. We're going to talk a little bit about how that this has changed your life, basically. Uh, what can you share with us? I mean, I got tons and tons of questions. I don't yeah. even know where to begin. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I. You know, one of my. You know, it, I, as I said, I followed kind of an entrepreneurial path on this. So. Once I actually got some big numbers, then I went out and, and said, okay, let's try and license this for film and TV, because I thought it was a very topical idea. Um, and uh, I actually, we took it out to the first set of film agents in Hollywood, and they said, nobody's going to buy this. We don't like it, blah, blah, blah. So then I said, fire them. Let's hire another set of film agents. Good for you. And, and uh, <laughs> we, we did that, and then this, the next guy said, okay, let's repackage it like this and like that. Went out and then within two weeks he sold it as as, a, as what they call a major film deal. Like it's a uh, you know uh, again uh, I they told me I'm not allowed, allowed to release numbers, but my agent said it's one of the biggest film deals he's ever seen. Which is, <laughs> really sweet. Yeah, which is uh, which is impressive. Um, you, yeah. So this is your agent for film, but this is not a literary agent. Is that correct? Well, you know, I, and I'm I'm pretty new to all this, so yeah. Uh, I had one. I went out and found one agent um, to kind of be my, I don't know, uh, partner in crime. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, to try and guide through this, and then that agent works with the foreign agents, yeah. and then also works with the film agents. Gotcha. And it sort of helps, you know, guide. Now that I'm getting into it, uh, you know, like making intelligent choices about how to, what to do with sequels, and and maybe, you know. I've got a lot of lot of book ideas I'd like to to write, so I sort of it gives a sounding board, especially as a as a um, self published author. You don't have you don't have much of a technical support team, so it's good to to get other people around you that know you know about the business and other the quite frankly, other things that are going on and how the business works and all that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. So yeah, well, I mean, I I take a lot of pride in being self published, but at the same time, it's good to have a support team that that, that can give you good advice as well. Great, you just segued me into my next Good. question. Support team, uh, Matt, you did something really interesting in terms of acquiring beta readers uh, yeah. before Cyberstorm, I guess, was complete or before it was published. Tell us a little bit about how you um, you acquired beta readers and how they influenced uh, the outcome of this book or, or what's going on with it now. Yeah. Well, I mean, to begin with, when you're when you're a new writer, I was just getting beta readers. I was bugging all my friends and family and everybody on Facebook, um, which works to a certain extent. You it can get, does work, you know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you use what resources you have at your disposal, you, you know, at whatever time. Um, and then one thing that I, I'd mentioned to Jason was that uh, when I was starting out, I went on Facebook, uh, Craigslist actually, and I said, uh, "I'm a new writer. I'll pay you twenty bucks if you read my book and just give me an honest feedback." You know. Um, and I did that. I ended up getting about 20 people. So it cost you about $400. But then it's very hard to get 20 of your friends to honestly give you feedback. You um, by paying some people that are a little bit of arm's length, a little bit of money, and say, I really want an honest feed, they'll give you 20 different points of view. And, and um, I think that's very powerful. As, as I wrote Atopia, and, I, and then I, um, I started to actively collect beta readers. <laughs> Um, now I have about 500 of them, which sounds which sounds a little bit too much, but it actually really you know I don't mind said you know the the book market is hundreds of thousands of readers to to give your book away for to a few hundred readers you get so many different points of view and if I keep on hearing the same thing from a lot of people even though I don't agree with it it means that seeing a lot of people have the same impression. Um, so that I, was it, a question it, that I, that was a question that I was going to ask you Matt when you have those many beta readers reading your book who do you trust? And so what you're doing is looking for themes that if, you know, X amount yeah. of people are saying essentially the same thing. I think that's important for, for writers to hear that. Yeah, it, it gives you, um, 
it gives you themes. You know, there's some things that you might not have thought of. You know, and I've got beta readers now all over the world. So you get, you know, you, when you're writing a book and you're you're trying to write it for an international market, you get a lot of different people, different countries feedback on certain ideas that you put in there. Uh, another thing that I've started to do is each one of my beta readers, I ask them what they do for a living. So I've got you know seven or eight doctors, and I've got people that are AI researchers and SETI researchers and this and that. So if ever I'm writing a book and I go, I need somebody who knows something about you know postmortem, <laughs> whatever. I look in my database, I go, oh, Bill's a doctor. I'll do an email hit. And That's really cool. You so know, you're and, already and, looking for the future projects and how to how to um, uh, seed that field with the people yeah. that you're good for you. Well, that, I want to know more. I want to know more about your characters and how this all got started for you. Um, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm probably fairly weak on characters. I have to say, my 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 books tend to be I, I'm very Probably. idea. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're very idea driven, and and okay. so you know, in Atopia, there's kind of a actually an interesting in Atopia. I had kind of a, a background of technology that I wanted to I wanted to express my vision of the future of the human computer interface, which sounds kind of boring. <laughs> I tried to, uh, in that I actually went and, and read through all these um, uh, old folklore from all around the world and I actually borrowed bits and pieces from old folkloric tales and turned them into cyber versions of those. Uh, and that's really the, where the genesis for, for those. So I actually went and read through a few hundred old folklore tales, Germanic folklore, really? you know, Native, Native American folklore. So those stories, I could actually trace each one of the stories in Atopia back to you know, an old folklore tale about something that happens to a character, um, you know, and actually I told sort of a future version of those uh, of those stories. Those stories tend to be very idea-driven, plot-driven, and then I kind of pasted, pasted the characters on top of Got them. it. Yeah, yeah, on top of the stories, yeah. Um, at first glance, some people may think of Atopia as being the opposite of Utopia, but it really means something different. Uh, Matt, can you tell us what, uh, what Atopia means? Um, well, Atopia, again, I think this is a, this comes from some German philosophers, as many of the words in philosophy come from, but it, it's a, it means a world without borders, or I think there's a, a longer technical definition of it, but that's basically what it's, uh, like a, a borderless world, um, and, and that fit really well into, uh, this book was a book about sort of endless virtual reality, and then what the impact of that would be on human beings um, as, as social animals. Um, and that you know, and so it was sort of a you know, if you had access to a limitless world, what you know, what mischief would people get up to? Um, and and that so I was exploring some of those uh, themes, but it also set up the um, the sequel. So the sequel is called Dystopia, um, hmm. and then the the, the actual the uh, the third part of it's called Utopia. So it's Atopia, Dystopia, Utopia is the three part um, series in that. Um, Matt, I'd like to backtrack just a little bit and, and discuss um, your method of, uh, of acquiring beta readers because yeah. this, this is a genius philosophy. You, not only are you acquiring many, many minds for the price of basically one editor, you're getting you know, anywhere from 20 to 500 different editors, but you're also creating a community of people that will leave reviews and also recommend your book. Uh, the yeah. Utopia Chronicles right now has 525 reviews uh, on Amazon.com. Cyberstorm has almost 1,900 in about six months. These are review numbers that maybe some of our audience doesn't realize. Most authors would kill to have this kind of review yeah. number and support system. So, so what you've done in acquiring beta readers is is pure genius in my opinion. I I can't believe that more authors aren't working harder to create a beta reader network than they are maybe just using social media or blogging or doing this or that, but uh, beta readers I think is going to be the new buzzword for people to really focus on to try and, and promote their work. Yeah, well, I, thanks, I'm glad it's a, it seems like a good idea. I don't know, you know, it, it's just, for me, it, it, I. I try putting some time into into the sort of the the social media stuff, but I didn't, I didn't really see it as a really good tool to to uh, for me anyway. And so this is just um, yeah, I don't know. It just seemed like something that made sense when I was trying to get into it. And it it really does give you a good community. Like you said, every 
every single one of those people that you get involved in helping you write a book and coming up with it is going to go and tell all of their friends about it. Um, so the more people you get, you know, get involved in the process, um, you know, but it's really getting involved in any way you can. And it's, uh, you know, it's a grind. Like I work really long hours. Um, it's a good word because it is. <laughs> it's 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 a grind. Like it's yeah. not. I have some other friends that uh, some people that get into writing and they say, well, I just want to write. You know, I don't want to do all that stuff. Say, well, then <laughs> you're not gonna. You're no one's not, gonna read you uh, then. <laughs> yeah, it, it's. Yeah. You, it's it's about half of your day is writing and the other half is is the marketing and and getting okay. you know keeping in touch with readers and and you know just making them a part of the process. That's, that's and and you know, Matt, I know that you know this because you've already queried um, dozens of agents. But if if writers think, oh, I'm just going to go the traditional route because I don't want to do all that, you know, when you log the when you clock the amount of time that you have put into pitching and sending and waiting and for for nothing, you know, for usually not what you yeah, want exactly. to hear. Boy, I, I think those hours compare, don't you? With, yeah. with marketing your own. You know, and the, the amazing thing is that right now, um, and maybe the big publishers will, will start to change their ways a little bit, but uh, if you do, like, if, if when you're starting out, it's better to, to uh, you know, to start out self-publishing, and then once you get some success, it also is better to be self-publishing. Um, so it's, you know, it, it sounds daunting, but that, you know, it's just, you know, you got to get up in the morning, put your socks on and just, you know, mm -hmm. get into it. And that's, that's just what you got to do if you want to be, if you want to be a writer. There's no, you know, there's no easy way to it. Um, you just got to, just got to get in there and grind and after a while you'll, you'll start to see some results. I want to share, um, I want to share with our audience, uh, this is uh, your, a website blog, this is MatthewMather.com. Mm -hmm. This is a great uh, place for, uh, for readers and for people to learn more about Matt, his books. Uh, to, I'm sure there's a contact page here, or a contact button maybe on the About uh, link, Matt, is that correct? Yeah, I think on there there's an About, there's a, my email uh, on okay. there. Okay. Yeah. There's also a Facebook group. Uh, that's been created called Author Author Matthew Mather. Uh, it's on Facebook uh, slash author dot Matthew dot Mather. And um, anyway, this is a great place. So I'm going to click the like button. I'm a liker now too. <laughs> and uh, we Thanks, encourage uh, other people to come here. This is a good place to chat with Matt and other um, other fans of his work. Um, uh, I could go on all day. Unfortunately, we try and keep uh, the show to kind of a minimum. Um, what are you working on now? What do you What do you do uh, now that uh, everything is taking off? <laughs> well, I actually spent this morning uh, rooting through World War One memorabilia in the attic of my house up here in, in, in England. Um, but I'm writing the sequel to Atopia, which is Dystopia. Um, and I'm also writing the sequel to Cyberstorm, which is going to be called Cyber Crash. Wow. Uh, yeah, so that's so there's actually three books planned in each one of those series. I'm kind of interleaving um, the two series at the, at the same time. Um, yeah, and that's that's pretty much that's keeping me busy. <laughs> Do you have people contact you regularly asking to be beta readers? Uh, yeah, I get about two. I, I, I leave a note at the end of my book saying, if you like to be a beta reader, you know, drop me an email, and I get about two or three a day. Great idea. That's a great yeah. idea. You know, for me, the takeaway of this interview, because I know that we're, we don't want to keep you too long, Matt, but the takeaway for this interview is that it really does take a village to get yourself published. And um, yeah. with examples like you, uh, Matt Mather, and, and Hugh Howie, and I can name several more, um, you all say the same thing. You really just have to go out there and find them, and then, and then take care of them. You know, it's a given. It's a give and take. It's a it's a mutual support system. And um, it sounds like you're doing that very well. <laughs> Trying to, yeah. Yeah. And and right. Matt, I, one more thing. I like what you said there. You said at the end of your books, you let people know, hey, if you're interested in being a beta reader or or leave a review. Um, please do so. To tell us a little bit briefly about how you um, encourage people to to continue the conversation, to be a part of what's going on, that kind of thing within your books. Yeah, well, it, it's exactly what you say. You just I have a little at the end of the book. I say, hey, if, you know, thanks for reading. If you enjoyed this, 
you know, you and if you want to be a beta reader for future books, just uh, you know, drop me a line. Um, and then I, I make a, a you know a small um, plea at the end. I say, you know, if, if you like to see books for two ninety nine, which is a price that self published authors can put them out at, then just go and drop you know a review on my book or anybody else's self published book. Put or if you putting a review in is the number one way to help market a book on something like Amazon. I think mm -hmm. um, the more reviews you get, that's the number one thing that everybody looks for when they're when they're looking to buy a book. They always look Absolutely. at the reviews. Like I've talked. I've done my own research on that. So the more reviews you get, and it's not just having a bunch of reviews, it's the more reviews you get on a daily, ongoing basis is the mm -hmm. thing that drives people to buy your books more. And so I just I say that. I say my, you know, it might already look like it has a lot of reviews, but having reviews on a daily, ongoing basis is what helps sell books. So please go and drop a review, and that will help guarantee more, more good books for $2.99 in the future. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that seems to encourage people to, to put a review down. You know? That's great advice. Fantastic. Well, we are out of time. It's basically the end of our show. I want to thank our guest, Matthew Mather. Check out his book on, on Amazon. Check out his website, MatthewMather.com. Um, I'm your host, Jason Matthews. She's your host, Marla Miller. Uh, thanks for being with us, and look for thanks, us yeah. on another episode. Thanks. Thanks, thanks Jason. Great. Right. Thanks. Thank thanks. you so much. Bye-bye.